hello all in this video we will see the cell death mechanism particular mechanisms actually and particularly focusing on cell death mechanism which is of apoptosis and mainly its detection so cell death what's what is cell death cell death is the event of a biological cell ceasing to carry out its functions so what are the types of cell deaths so pyroptosis apoptosis oncosis autophagy these are the types of cell deaths and one new terminology or type of cell death has been evolved that is ferroptosis it is a type of programmed cell death dependent on iron and it's characterized by accumulation of lipid peroxides and is genetically and biochemically distinct from other forms of regulated cell deaths such as apoptosis so what's what is programmed cell death so apoptosis or which is also called as type 1 cell death and autophagy which is also called as type 2 cell death are both the forms of programmed cell death while necrosis is non physiological process and that occurs as a result of infection or injury so these are programmed and non programmed cell deaths so what are the assays used for the detection of apoptosis an apoptosis assay detects and quantifies the cellular events associated with pro with programmed cell death so these are caspase 3 detection dna fragmentation tunnel assay comet assay cytochrome c assay parp assay and annexin 5 pi assay and these can be done or determined by using various techniques such as elisa western blot flow cytometry microscopy and gel electrophoresis and so on so before going to how these methods or um, methods works we will see how what are the differences between apoptosis and necrosis and particularly how we will find out the cell is necrotic or apoptotic so we'll see first of all the difference between them apoptosis is the programmed cell death necrosis is the premature cell death apoptosis occurs through shrinkage shrinking of cytoplasm followed by the condensation of the nucleus and necrosis occurs through swell swelling of cytoplasm occur along with mitochondria followed by cell lysis apoptosis is a naturally occurring physiological process whereas necrosis is a pathological process caused by external agents like toxins trauma etc in chromatin chromatin is aggregated during apoptosis whereas no structural changes is observed in chromatin in case of no necrosis apoptosis is a caspase dependent pathway whereas necrosis is a caspase independent pathway apoptosis is localized process destroying individual cells whereas necrosis affects conti contiguous cell groups apoptosis as phagocytized either by phagocytes or adjacent cells whereas in necrosis phagos it is phagocytized by phagocytes apoptosis is often beneficial although abnormal activity may cause diseases whereas necrosis always harmful to the organism in apoptosis pre-lytic dna fragmentation occurs whereas in necrosis post-lytic dna digestion occurs apoptosis involves in involved in controlling the cell number in the body whereas necrosis is involved in the induction of immune system and defending the body from pathogen so why i have enlisted these differences is because these okay depending on this once you understand this then only you will understand how this patho mechanisms work because i have uh, in, the, in these two slides i have mentioned one two three because it depends these assays are depend depends on this properties of how this processes occurs for example an exin 5 pi it is depends on internal the cytoplasmic structure then caspase 3 assay others are comet and tunnel assay which are dependence on the dna fragmentation so we will see one by one in the up, uh, upcoming slides how this all things works so first one is an exin 5 pi flow cytometric analysis of apoptotic cells 
so suppose one cell is there and it has extracellular and intracellular domain we all know this phospholipid because cell membrane is made up of phospholipids by layer so what happens in apoptosis that internal phosphatidyl serine is getting exposed to the outside environment from the internal compartment it goes to the outside so what will happen is if we add annexin into the cells that annexin will bind with the phosphatidyl serine which is present on the surface of the cell in case of apoptosis and which gives green fluorescent signal and if the cell is dead then propidium iodide that is pi stain will stain to that particular cell so in case of apoptosis the annexin 5 will work and in case of necrotic cells propidium iodide cell will work and if cell is viable then there will be no staining so i have shown in the uh, down left bottom bottom one figure that is actual image of necrotic and apoptotic cells using uh, uh, using micrograph so green cells are apoptotic cells and uh, orange or red color fluorescent images are of necrotic cells so next we'll see fluorescent imaging and flow cytometric analysis of apoptotic induced cells because these upper two figures are of fluorescence imaging in uh, a figure is of bright field and b figure is of fluorescent image and down figure is of flow cytometric analysis figure so upper figure i have already explained how uh, green and so uh, you can see in the b fluorescent image that is green suppose you you can say it is of apoptotic cell but in uh, uh, the same figure you can see the one cell is labeled with both means green as well as red it means it has both necrotic and apoptotic so you cannot say so at actually at what stage the cell is for that we need to go for the flow cytometric analysis and it shows uh, four quadrants so once you get this so you will get the uh, figure in the graphical form uh, like this that is pi on y axis and x axis is like an exin 5 fit c but you need to know at which what quadrant which cells are there that's why we need to more about um, we need to know more about this so this is here so you see suppose cells are normal and live so both no staining will be there so i have shown here ne negative negative plus minus minus plus it means plus means positive min uh, minus means negative we, we all know so it's it means if live cell is there then do no stain will be there so the cell will be normal suppose if cell is in early apoptotic stage then only fit c will bind to it and pi will be negative if cell is in late stage of apoptosis then f both fit c and pi will be positive and if fit uh, cell is in necrotic stage only pi will bind because we all all know the, that pi only binds to necrotic or dead cells so this is how we can do this assay in flow cytometric uh, uh, analysis because we will get this uh, kits so kits will be containing this i have just mentioned for the information uh, kits will have pi solution then annexin 5 binding solution then annexin 5 fit c conjugate and then buffer so this is how this analysis can be done next is comet assay which is also called as single cell gel electrophoresis assay so why it is called as comet assay because it forms a comet like structure and the resulting image i have shown here is is resembles the comet with a distinct head and tail the head is composed of the intact dna while a tail is consist of single stranded or double stranded dna bricks the extent of dna liberated from the head of the comet is directly proportional to the amount of dna damage okay so because of the structure of the it forms comet it is called as comet assay and it utilizes or it needs single cells so this assay can be done only in cells so how this can be done 
the procedure is here so you need to mix the cells with low melting point agarose at 37 degrees celsius then you need to immobilize cells on a comet slide these slides will be av available comet commercially next you what you do is treat these cells with lysis solution lysis solution because it removes membrane and histones next step will be these samples will be treated with alkali because alkali causes denaturation denatur of dna so it causes separation of the strands dna strands double stranded strands and next step is these samples are stained with intercalating dye okay St and in order to visualize by fluorescence microscopy so this fluorescent tax will be inter acting as intercalating agent so in other words we can see that if the dna is damaged so there will be single or double standard breaks into it that breaks will be sustained or can be quantified so this method is currently used as qualitative as well as quantitative genotoxicity test in order to determine the genotoxic substances or chemicals have the potential of genotoxicity next is tunnel assay or which is also called as tunnel staining tunnel is terminal deoxynucleotidyl transferase that is tdt utp nick end labeling assay this is the long form of tunnel assay so this dt sorry tdt that is the enzyme and this enzyme terminal of deoxynucleotide transferase has to be bind with 3 dash hydroxyl terminal of dna breaks so i have shown the dntp structure so here 3 dash hydroxyl terminal is there so this is how if the more number of breaks are there then more number of binding will be there with this enzyme and this enzyme will be further tagged and then give fluorescence so this assay detects apoptotic cells that undergo extensive dna degradation during the late stages of apoptosis and it detects apoptotic dna fragmentation and is widely used to quantify as well as to identify apoptotic cells or to detect excessive dna breakage in individual cells so the detection can be done by using two methods that is one is enzymatic and second one is fluorescent which is which are called as labeling so labeling can be done in both ways so in enzymatics brom bromodeoxyuridine is one of the thing which can be used uh, for the labeling or in fluorescence azide containing fluorophores are available so there is a lot more in this to understand so till now we have uh, every uh, we have seen that how uh, apoptosis can be quantified and what are the characteristics of apoptosis now we will move towards the necrosis so the process of necrosis to be happen before uh, requires the inflammation in order to heal that no but if inflammation is severe or uncontrollable then it will lead to necrosis so how it occurs is by either by infection injury and toxins body fights for this uh, against this infections toxins and injury and by uh, releasing the chemicals and uh, it attempts to heal itself but if it is in excess i'm talking about inflammation if inflammation is excess and body is not able to tackle it then it will lead to necrosis so how healing can be done by using really by releasing certain chemicals because that trigger a response from your immune system and that what this response is what this trigger is and what the cells are required to heal that this will we'll see in the upcoming videos so what are the targets of uh, target organs or organs of the immune system we will see that first so there are 
spleen, thymus, lymph nodes, lymphatic vessels, bone marrow, tonsils, appendix. These are the organs of immune system which contains naive T and B cells which are required to heal or protect the body. Okay. So, before moving further, we will see what are the inflammatory mediators which are present in our body. So, there are two types of inflammatory medias, mediators which are depending on their location. One is cell uh, from the tissue and one is from blood. From tissue, they are cell derived. So, these are from the mast cells like secretory granules which are which secretes, secretes histamine which are responsible for vasodilatation in, uh, and increasing vascular permeability and other is phagocytes which are tissue micro macrophages these are not microphages these are macrophages which are also called as Langerhans cells or dendritic cells and in blood in plasma we will find complement and kinase like cytokinase and like that so these are all inflammatory mediators so how this process is all works so we we know that how inflammation starts for inflammation to occur all cell recruitments needs to be done at one site where the inflammation or healing process should be started so for example just consider you if you have uh, bacteria comes into your body so on the surface of bacteria there will be PAMP that is pattern associate okay I'll tell you the long form in the later stages so this PA what this PAMPs are these are these will be killed by uh, macrophages and neutrophils which directly will be involved in engulfing of this PAMPs and in blood coagulation factors will be responsible for tackling with PAMPs okay so these bacteria how this uh, our body recognizes that uh, bacteria is because of these PAMPs and these are mainly recognized by immune cells immune cells like macrophages and these macrophages secrete cytokines like TNF alpha and IL-1 these are all uh, responsible for lo both local as well as systemic effect local effect are like inflammation and repairing and systemic effects are like fever and leukocytosis and in local effect how it repairs is by promoting fibroblast activity or by using macrophages neutrophils also it can be done by complement factors that is by lysis using complement factor 3a and 5b and this com complement factors along with antibodies are responsible for either opsonization or lysis so c3a and c5b are re uh, responsible either by repair by using chemotaxis and also by using promoting fibroblast activity so this is how these processes all are interlinked and this is how the it's very that's why it is if we see it individually it is very difficult to understand but how these are all connected in this figure i have tried to explain in in very simple way so that everybody can understand and uh, how it is uh, interlinked with each other and one more thing I have missed, I guess, to explain that is uh, that is how histamine is responsible for mm, uh, or involved in the inflammation is by release uh, histamine gran. So these are the cells which have granular content content of histamine, heparin, serine proteases, carboxypeptidase A3. So these are responsible for increasing vascular perme permeability and which is ultimately respons uh, responsible for diabetes. Diabetes means the movement or migration of neutrophils to the required site. Suppose these neutrophils are in blood. So the, and you you have the tissue injury then you need to have the more number of uh, neutrophils to the tissue in order to 
uh, manage this inflammation so what are in this we we have we need to see adaptive immune response that is the cells which are present in lymphatic tissue so why adaptive immune response is because these responses are uh, uh, spec very specific against pathogen okay so lymphatic tissues are of means uh, uh, lymphatic tissue has cells of immune cells which are like t cells b cells natural killer cells but i'll try to simplify this as well so and antigen presenting cells such as dendritic cells and macrophage can engulf the pathogen and it activates means once the uh, activation of antigen presenting cells can be done then they travels to the lymph node and activates the adaptive immune response because these cells are located there in lymph nodes or in lymphatic tissues or organs so these cells are naive these are not active so that's why antigen along with antigen presenting cells needs to come to their location and tell them that uh, yes you need to now take the action so these cells then be activated like plasma cells then secrete antibodies which are also called as immunoglobulins and then t cells uh, will be further uh, converted to the t helper cells cytotoxic t cells not natural killer cells we'll see in the next slides how this happens so we have we now have suppose progenitor lymphoid cells in our uh, target organs like spleen uh, then suppose cd4 and cd8 cells are there but these t cells are naive these are not active so if antigen destroys it uh, destroys these cells uh, and if we have self antigen then these t cells will be destroyed before it gets maturate maturation of the before maturing maturation of these cells so if the antigen is of foreign nature so it is not of our body then these t, uh, t cells that is cd4 and cd8 plus cells needs to be mat ma uh, requires maturation in order to do their downstream pathway or uh, in order to activate and release certain chemicals in order to take care of that antigen okay so there are two t cells that is t helpers uh, cells and cytotoxic t cells so naive cd4 cells get activated and produces C t helper cells so it requires the ma uh, activation by using major histocompatibility factor 2 and for naive cd8 plus cells which activates uh, and forms cytotoxic T cells which requires major histocompatibility complex 1. So these are the differences major or minor differences. Also one more difference is how cytotoxic T cell destroys specific infected cells. It is because of their epitopes present on the bacterial surface. So it recognizes it very specifically. So also T cells activates B cells and natural killer cells along with macrophages and these are also ultimately involved in taking care of the uh, foreign antigen or antibodies. So uh, sorry sorry antigens or foreign any foreign material. Okay one more thing is antibodies. So how these are in involved? It either activates complement or it causes opsonization that is phagocytosis or it neutralizes or it neutralizes or either we can say it that it prevents adhesion to the surfaces so this is how these things works in together because if you see it anywhere even in the book so it will be too lengthy or too complicated to understand but i have tried to explain this in a one single slide and you know connecting manner so you can understand what these things are actually thank you